Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Lily and I'm here with Nathan, Hi. another familiar face. Um, we are with San Antonio Water System and Nathan is in the Conservation Department, I'm in the Communications Department and today we're out at the San Antonio Botanical Gardens because we are going to talk to you about monarchs. However, before we do that, I want to ask all of you to please help us by sharing that we are on. You can swipe on your mobile devices, uh, different devices you swipe in different directions, but swipe and share. Um, if you're watching us on Twitter, please share it on Twitter. If you are watching on Periscope, which mm -hmm. that's awesome because then you can ask us live questions, um, then you know that's when you do the swiping through your app. Um, if you are watching this at a later date as part of our replay, then by all means, please comment and you can continue to share even afterwards. So um, again, we are at the San Antonio Botanical Garden. We are in the old fashioned garden, yep. also known as the butterfly, butterfly garden. Yes, yes, butterfly garden, especially um, right now. Exactly. And you'll see as we walk along, there's some markers that have butterflies because there's a lot of plants here that um, help the butterflies along the way. So I'm going to get out of the frame and let Nathan talk to you guys about the migration and all the cool stuff that's happening. We're in Monarch Champion City, so he's going to talk about that as well. And uh, we'll be asking some questions. Please ask us questions. Uh, yeah, ask a lot. Let us let us know what else we can tell you about monarchs. All right, okay. all yours. Off and running. <laughs> Thank you, Lily. It is a beautiful day here at the San Antonio Botanical Gardens, and we are in the middle of Butterfly Mecca right now, as as you can sort of see behind me. Um, we have we have just a ton of different species of butterflies right now. Some of these are local species. Some of these are coming through. Um, and uh, as it's a testament to our Monarch Champion City status, uh, Mayor, Mayor Ivy Taylor uh, did these things uh, on a federal level to recognize San Antonio and there are 24 criteria for a city to become a Monarch Champion City and right now San Antonio is the only one. So we are proud of that designation and that includes planting gardens to hold monarchs at a caterpillar stage such as milkweed, planting milkweed for the larvae to eat, planting flowers for the adult monarchs to nectar on such as milkweed, goldenrod, a lot of different flowers, almond verbena, a lot of different plants that produce flowers, produce nectar that will hold these adult butterflies. And for the past several weeks if you're in San Antonio around central south Texas you've seen hordes of little butterflies going through and those are the American snout butterflies. Uh, they migrate in the late summer as well and and they're the ones that, that get all over our vehicles when we drive unfortunately. Uh, but now we are beginning to see monarchs coming through on their normal migration south into the mountains of Michoacan province in Mexico where they overwinter and it's only the late season adults that do this. They fly down from as far north as the northern half of the U.S., fly all the way down to Mexico, and they hibernate there for the winter. They're stopping along the way at nectar plants, like what you see around me. Um, they really like this purple uh, plant behind me. I'm just going to change sides uh, because I forgot the name of this plant. Um, it's called Porter Weed, and there's a purple and a red. Um, and this porter weed is a really popular stop right now and if you're looking at the plant with me you're seeing several different butterflies on it right now we've got a monarch right here in the front uh, that has just stopped and um, two monarchs look at that and so these guys are nectaring up they are looks like they're fighting over one flower come on guys there's plenty of food here uh, we also have gulf fritillaries we have giant swallowtail butterflies we have queen butterflies, which are in the same genus uh, as the monarch, but they are a different species. They're the smaller, uh, kind of a rusty color versus the bright colors uh, that you see on the monarchs. And this is actually a queen that's kind of flying around. Um, if you'll come around this side with me, Daniel, um, there's a giant swallowtail kind of on this side over here. You can see this large black and yellow, um, primarily on the top. That's a giant swallowtail. And uh, they actually lay their eggs on citrus. Uh, and and then these are sort of a local. These don't migrate. But so, Texas Scholar is asking us. Okay. She's saying, did you know that there's an app that actually tracks butterfly migration? Um, I did not, but I'm not surprised. Uh, we have a great uh, local website here in San Antonio called the Texas Butterfly Ranch. 
that's run by one of our community conservation members, uh, Monica Makeley, and they help track monarch migration. They actually do some local monarch tagging. And we have seen at least one monarch here in the garden this morning with a white circular tag on its wing. Uh, it was, for some reason, it was not really amenable to being caught and so we could look at the tag. I don't understand that. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, and so whenever you see a monarch butterfly that's got a white circular tag on one of the under wings, uh, you know that it has been tagged either locally or somewhere north of us. Uh, the individual butterfly that we saw earlier was very pale, it was worn, so you could tell it's been flying for a while. And so some, it got tagged somewhere farther north and it would have been really neat to be able to collect that tag information and report it uh, for, for the migration. So, so before you jump yes. back in, let's do, let's do a quick re-intro because we re -intro. noticed some of you guys just joined us. God, so, y'all are slow, come on! <laughs> so I'm Lily, this is Nathan, Hi. we're at the San Antonio Botanical Gardens and we are talking to you about the monarch migration, um, which of course is happening right now. This is the perfect time. I know there's an event this weekend on yep. monarchs. Um, so I, again, please swipe, share, let others know this is happening. Uh, and Nathan is our expert who is gonna continue to talk to you guys about what we can, what you're seeing, what we can expect, and what you can do to help that migration along. Right, All absolutely. Right. Uh, the most important thing that monarchs need during the fall migration is plants to stop on and get nectar. And uh, they're not looking to lay eggs. There are a few that will lay eggs on milkweed and things in the fall, but it's, it's a bit unrealistic to expect a lot of survival. These butterflies are migrating. They're just, they're tanking up, they're getting energy so that they can keep going to Mexico. And so, uh, most importantly, Daniel, follow me around this way. Um, oh, well, ask, we can walk and ask yeah, at the yeah, same time. Multitasking. So we were asked um, if the monarchs will take a long time to find the, the milkweed that they just planted now for next summer. Um, will, they take, will they take a long time to find the milkweed for next summer? No, they won't. Uh, milkweed releases uh, uh, chemical odors that attract the monarchs. They, they, uh, they hone in on that. So uh, that's not going to be a problem for the monarch butterflies at all. And so you can really see they love this porter weed. We've got several here. Uh, I was here yesterday afternoon scoping out, and there, weren't, there were maybe a couple of dozen monarchs. And so the, the numbers have really picked up. And we expect the cold front arriving today to push them down. Um, we're getting a lot of reports from members on Ant-Man's Hill, my Facebook group, uh, up in the Dallas-Fort Worth area of tons of monarchs up there. So they are coming this way. This cold front's gonna help push them through. And so I would certainly suggest you getting out to the Botanical Gardens to perhaps the Audubon Center at Mitchell Lake, uh, any place where you've got flower gardens and be able to be able to get out and really take a look at these butterflies. And Nathan, we saw some, Danny and I were here earlier, yes. and we were seeing some really big ones that looked like what we knew were monarchs, mm -hmm. and then some that looked like monarchs but were kind of right. smaller. So right. those are which ones? Okay, so uh, right now we what we've got on this plant are just monarchs, then we have some really bright orange ones which are called gulf fritillaries. They're bright orange on the top with some silvery patterns underneath. Um, and then we have what are called queens. This little, there's a queen butterfly right here on this plant. You can see it. This is a queen butterfly. You can see they're a little smaller. They're kind of a dark rusty color. They have the same sort of a pattern as a monarch. They are cousins. Monarchs and queens are in the same genus of butterflies, the Danaeus genus, but they're different species. And um, you'll find them sort of in the same places, but blue mist flower is a really popular plant for queen butterflies if you like to have those. And um, they have some of that planted here on the other yeah. side of the garden. There's some over here. Um, yeah, there's some, there. but there aren't any butterflies oh, on it. Uh, it's a little uh, it's tired. It's a little sad one. Yes. So we were asked, is North Georgia on the migration path? Is North Georgia on the migration path? Um, it is. They will. They'll migrate down the East Coast and sort of, and sort of. They'll, some will go to Florida, and and just kind of hang out there in Florida. But many will then follow their pattern kind of towards the Southwest and come come down the flyway um, into into Texas and into Mexico. Uh, there are a couple of different ones. They're sort of a West Coast flyway, but this is mostly a Central U.S., Eastern U.S. flyway. And 
they will they will fly down we will see this this go on for a couple three weeks and then it's gonna it's gonna fade out and there are maps right we can we'll yes there are maps link there to some of the maps that show the exact yes migration there's a great migration map on the texas butterfly ranch website that shows these patterns and we'll be able to we'll be able to to get a a picture of that. If you go to GardenStyleSA.com, we have a Monarch photo gallery there that shows this map, and so you can go look up that as well. And um, we've got a couple articles on Monarchs there for planting. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. And and for for just getting some general information. Uh, the most important thing though is these guys need energy for the flight, and so uh, all all they're doing is tanking up and and they need nectar they need they need sugar carbs so that they can continue their trip so this is why this excuse me beautiful flowering garden is so popular with these monarchs lots of nectar absolutely uh, all of the flowering plants in here right now are nectar plants that they're attracted to <coughs> excuse me i'm getting the dry throat maybe i need some nectar too i don't know <laughs> right yeah. and um so but it's really great. Uh, Danny's really been able to focus on a lot of these butterflies uh, as I'm talking and coughing on my distinct apologies. And, um, <coughs> excuse me. So it's really amazing just to think about a stopping point like this in San Antonio. And we're really fortunate to have a place like the San Antonio Botanical Gardens and, and a lot of these other little neighborhood gardens that have planted milkweeds or that have planted mistflower um, to be able to to stop and just enjoy these jewels because um, who knows you never know about how the environment will will be and monarch populations rise and fall uh, with various factors and so it's always important to take care of them and be able to do our part plant the kind of plants to either help them along as caterpillars or as adults and <coughs> excuse me and to be able to to support whatever efforts there are for preservation. Uh, there are a lot of preservation efforts for that, that mountain area in Mexico where they overwinter, and it's really just a few acres, and there are hundreds of millions of butterflies there. So uh, it's, it's an amazing place to go. Uh, if you ever get to see it in your life, I never have. It's one of those bucket list things for me. So the best, yeah, the best visual distinction between the Gulf and I didn't catch the rest the of the Gulf name. Fritillary yeah. and the Monarch. And the Monarch, okay. Well, Monarchs are bigger. Uh, monarchs have stripes on their wings. Generally speaking, they have black stripes on their wings, black pattern stripes. They look like stained glass windows. Sort of like a stained glass window, that's good. <laughs> and they'll have white spots around the edges. Um, and then the Gulf Fritillary will be smaller. The, the tops of the wings are very bright orange without hardly any patterning, maybe a few spots, no stripes. And then the underside has a silvery spotted pattern to them. It, it, it almost reflects sunlight, but very bright. <coughs> Excuse so, me. <coughs> so let's recap and oh. tell us kind of three things we should keep in mind for this migration time frame, and then maybe you can tell us about what's happening this weekend. All right, so um, the biggest things to think about when during this migration period is number one, if you're interested in supporting the migration, maybe for next year, plant nectar plants. Goldenrod, almond verbena, this porterweed, milkweed, um, any kind of uh, blue spire sage. Uh, butterflies really like that, especially the monarchs and um, it gives them a good source of energy as they're moving south. Goldenrod is a really popular one uh, for monarchs, believe it or not. Uh, and then this weekend the, at the Monarch Festival, um, you, can, you can go out and go to that event. There's a lot of really interesting information booths that are gonna be there. Uh, they're going to, to have more information on the tagging of the monarchs, and, and so it's, it's really neat to be able to be involved with all that. Nathan, why did they tag the monarchs? Just a great question. They tag monarchs to be able to track their migration. Uh, it, it would be really neat. I would have loved to be able to catch that one that we had a tag on because the information will say where it was tagged because these tags don't stay with the monarch year for year. These monarchs only live at most for several months. And so a monarch that gets tagged in Minnesota, let's say, will have specific number information on it and then it will come down here and if we catch it and we record that information and report it to some website, they can say, oh, well, it took three weeks for that butterfly to get down here for wherever it was found here, and then it can re relay back to its migration trip. And so it's just, you know, interesting information.
Good. And where is the festival happening? At the Pearl. It's at the Pearl, yes. <laughs> Sorry. Mine okay. froze. <laughs> Too much coughing and not enough oxygen. Yeah, it's at the Pearl this weekend. So go on out there. The Pearl is a great place to experience. They have great food and entertainment there as well. Uh, and this is going to be a great event. Uh, so get out there, learn about Monarchs, and experience the champion city that San Antonio is. All right. Well, I'm going to join you to wrap up. Thank you, everyone, so much for joining us. Um, I think Nathan had some great information. I promise we'll get him some water for the coffee and afterwards. Oh, I swear. <laughs> um, and so, again, make sure that if you haven't already planted those nectar plants, you do so now for next year. Mm -hmm. um, that'll help the migration period, which is in October. It's around this it's time. It's generally right? October, uh, mid to late October for us. Uh, it starts earlier as you get farther north. Is there, before we wrap up, is there anything <clears throat> we can do, like, Monarchs usually fly a little higher. Like, how do we avoid killing as many of them when we're driving around, I guess is what I'm asking, if that's even possible. It's just like the, well, the snout butterflies generally fly low. Monarchs are kind of a low high. I mean, if you, it's unfortunate if you hit one, but there aren't as many uh, in the migration as there were the snout butterflies. So, so hopefully the chances of you hitting of one is less, but you still <laughs> might. and. You know, darn it. Yeah, but. yeah. So, you know, if you hit one, that's okay. Just make sure you plant some nectar flowers for them next year and yes. you help that process along. I think nature has accounted mm -hmm. for that. Yes. Um, so thank you again for joining us. Every Thursday at 1030, we try to bring you uh, some kind of conservation topic. Um, we usually uh, tag Nathan to do anything to do with insects <laughs> and wildflowers and lots of other fun things. Yep. And we've got all kinds of gardening topics as well as sauce projects. So Thursday's 1030. We hope to see you next week. Thank you for being here. Thank you. See ya.